Hi everyone, welcome back. So this morning, myself and Matthew, one of our marine education specialists, waded out into the York River today with a seine net. And today we're gonna be showing you some of the animals that we caught. We caught a lot more than we actually thought we were going to, so that's a great thing. Um, so we have Matthew here. Hello. And we have some of the animals that we caught today. So Matthew's gonna go through some of our species for us. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with our invertebrates and work our way up to vertebrates. So an invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. And one of them we caught today are some sea squirts. You can see when I squeeze it, it squirts water. So they siphon in water. You can see this one right here it has two siphons. It siphons in one side and it goes through and it spits it out the other side like that. <laughs> and um, they're actually the closest relative compared to anything else we caught to us that's not a vertebrate today. So when they're planktonic floating around, they have a um, notochord, which is uh, like a primitive backbone. And as they grow up, they lose that. But that's really cool. So you can see, you can see sometimes you can see their in internal organs if the sun's out, but it's kind of cloudy today. Another invertebrate we caught. Uh, we caught two different types of crabs. This one is a mud crab. And you can see on the back of him, he has an invertebrate as well, which is a barnacle. So that's cool. And barnacles are free floating when they're planktonic, when they're first born. And then they look for something hard to stick to. And once they find something, they'll stick to it and they can never move again. So this one found this mud crab and eventually this mud crab will shed out of his shell and this barnacle on top will have to live on the ex exoskeleton of this guy's shed, which is cool. And then the mud crab itself, you can see, they don't have any flippers. We'll look at a blue crab in a minute. So blue crabs have flippers right here, but these guys just stick mostly to the bottom or onto oyster shells. That's where they like to live in oyster reefs or rocky bottom type. Uh, another invertebrate we have is the blue crab. And you can actually see this one's really cool. This is a juvenile and you can see his shell right here. And then the back, you can see he's backing out of it kind of. So this one is actually currently molting. And this time of the year, all the juvenile crabs that are really small like this one molt and they become bigger. So once they molt, they're soft for about 24 hours. And while they're soft, they're vulnerable to predators. So they have to hide with their best ability while they're soft. And then they harden up and they become hard again. So when this one sheds, this one probably shed in the next 30 minutes and then we'll let them go. And this one is, uh, this is a female. So it's hard to tell with juvenile crabs, but you can see that her apron, which is the little arrow on the bottom of her, is kind of big. And the females will have big aprons and the males will have skinny ones that go straight up. I think that's all of our invertebrates we caught. So I'll move on to our vertebrates and I'll do the cool one, coolest one first. Try and grab them. So this is a pipe fish. And I was really surprised we caught one because of the time of the year it is. But this is a, a more probably mid adult. Usually they get, they get up to be this long. So pipefish are related to seahorses and they like to live in SAVs, submerged aquatic vegetation, mostly eelgrass, that kind of stuff. So we catch them sometimes here because we have some grasses on the bottom. And well, something really cool about pipefish and seahorses is that the males will actually give birth to the babies. So the female will lay her eggs in his pouch, his brood pouch on his front, and then he will actually nurture the eggs until they uh, hatch and they'll release into the wild as a little juvenile pipefish, which is really cool. And while we're talking about babies, we'll talk about our skillet fish real quick. So this is a skillet fish, and you can see that this is a female by, she has a humongous stomach on her. So right here is her belly. So right now she's probably about to give birth to her eggs. She'll lay eggs on an oyster reef usually, inside of an oyster shell. And then she'll sit with them 
and protect them until they hatch. So you sometimes you'll catch skillet fish in a little dead oyster shell and um, they, there'll be a bunch of eggs in there and usually they're like orange or brown depending on the how much time they have left they have until they hatch. So, and also one thing you tell by a skillet fish is that they have a little suction cup on their bottom like she's sticking to my hand right now. Let me see if I can flip her over. She doesn't want to flip. Yeah. There we go. Right here is a little suction cup. So if you have her in like an aquarium, she'll stick to glass, which is really cool to have in some side tanks. Um, move on to uh, another type of fish. So this is an Atlantic silver side. And you can tell them apart. I don't know. <laughs> you can tell them apart be from anchovies, which we'll talk about in a minute, because silver sides have one long silver stripe down the side of their body. And um, when they're schooling together, this one long stripe blends in together. So if there's a big fish like a striped bass or a drum or something trying to eat them, they'll, that reflection will shine off the light in the water. And it'll be hard for the fish to see, single out a single uh, silver side in one pack. So it looks like one big blob to a fish in the water. And then another fish that looks like the silver side is the bay anchovy. You can see they have a similar stripe down their side. It's not as silver. And you can see that their mouth right here opens up humongous. So bay anchovies swim with their mouth wide open in the water to get their food. They're still eating plankton and little tiny organisms filtering out the water and going in their gills. And that's what they eat. Unlike silver sides, would go along and eat little detritus and little pieces of plant or little animals. Another one of our fish. So this is a little naked goby. And if you can assume why it's called naked, he doesn't have any scales. So he's kind of covered in slime, mostly, like an eel. So eels don't have scales either, like an American eel. But you can see they live along the oyster reef as well. They're similar to the skillet fish we talked about, but they don't have a little suction cup on the bottom. And there's a couple of different types of gob gobies as well. This one's the naked. That one's cool. And then, oh yeah, I forgot. So this is also, this is an invertebrate. I forgot about him in the beginning. Um, this is a clam, and this is a soft shell clam. So we have a couple of different, different types of clams in the York River. Hard clams are the clams that you usually eat. And these clams right here are soft shell clams. And they do not get very big. This is probably about the size that they'll get. And you can see his siphon coming out the top. So they'll have one a foot and a siphon, and then they'll siphon the water out of the, siphon water to get their food and their foot moves them around in the sand. So clam, unlike oysters or mussels or barnacles, clams can actually move, not very fast or not very long distance, but they can move with their foot. So their foot will come out and they'll wiggle around and they can move a little bit if they need to. And you can see his hands coming out right here. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think we have one more fish. So this little guy right here, this is a juvenile red drum. And we don't usually catch them too often here, so it's pretty cool to see them. And you can see this tail right here that there's this black spot. And you can progressively get older, they'll become larger. They can get like this big. And they'll become less spotty on their body. And they'll become all silver and like goldish color. And then on their tail, they'll have a couple spots. So his, his or her spots are starting to develop now and she'll lose the coloration on her body and become just one spot on her tail. Awesome. So yeah, as we've discussed today with Matthew, we've caught a lot of different animals, invertebrates and fish um, today in the York River. So unfortunately during this time, we would be taking a lot of field trips out to the York to do some sanding activities, uh, but we decided to make it a virtual activity for you all today. Um, so I hope you guys learned a little during this lesson and come back next time.